Coin on. Hello YouTube, this is Robert with CoinOp. In today's video, what I'm going to review is some double dies that you can find every day in your pocket change if you just search. Uh, these are going to be my picks. Um, I look for these all the time. Anytime I do search for pocket change or search my pocket change, which believe it or not, I still do check that. Um, it'll take in different ones of these will add a little bit or some of them will add a whole lot it depends on the variety that you possibly will get but this is my top 10 picks so let's get started and i'll show you what well what double dies i look for whenever i search my pocket change before we get started let's take and learn the difference between a double die and a doubled die now one of them, as you notice, has a D at the end of the letter doubled, the other does not. The one is machine double. It is not a true double die, and for most variety experts, it has no extra value to it, and it's considered die damage. The one on the right, it's a true double die, and you can see two distinct sets of letters that were stamped into the die. Now here's a picture of the date of a machine double die and a true double die for the 1969 San Francisco Lincoln Send. The one on the left, again, it don't have no extra value. Some people sell them on eBay and they do get extra value. I've sold them for educational purposes and I ended up stopping because some people I think were buying them and reselling them. However, the one on the right is worth thousands of dollars. Notice a very key point here. The S is double on the 69 machine doubling, whereas on the true double die, it's not a repunched mint mark, so there is no extra anything to the mint mark. This is a key in looking for the 1969S double die obverse. Now you know the difference between machine doubling, which is die damage, and a true double die. Let's go look at some of the coins that I look for while searching my pocket change. Just as a quick note, you'll hear me talk about serifs throughout this video. Here's an example of what the serifs are in this picture. The first one I'm going to start out with is going to be the 1995 Lincoln Cent FS101 in the Cherry Picker's Guide. This is a nice double die obverse. In AU58, they're worth about $8. Min State 63 Brown, about $22. Now you can find these in your pocket change of higher grades. So Min State 63, or I'm sorry, 66, goes for about $35. The record for it was set on June 2nd of 2020 at an NGC 67 Brown on eBay brought $99.95. Now also in 1995, and a lot of people don't look for this, but the Denver Mint, they also took and struck a double die in the Cherry Pickers. This is the FS103. In the AU50, they run about $90. In the AU58, about $125. On March 9th of 2014, at Great Collections, a PCGS AU58 brought $220. Not bad for finding a penny in your pocket. Staying with the 90 series, in 1997, the Lincoln Cent had a doubled year. It's listed in the Cherry Pickers as a FS101, and in a Mint State 60, it's valued at about $80. In a Mint State 63, $100. A mint state 64 red between 80 and 153, 63 brown about 50. Now remember, these later dates, you should be able to find them in your pocket change, still in uncirculated condition. In 1982, the mint changed the composition of the Lincoln cent to a zinc core plated with copper. Due to the increasing cost of copper, with these changes came problems. Now, I'm not sure of the technical terms, but many of the Lincoln cents had blister problems. I want to point this out because this will affect the pricing of a coin that you might find in your pocket change, with the cleaner profile and fields being more valuable than the coins showing some or, or well, all the way up to a lot of the plate blistering. Some AU coins with a clear profile and fields could bring more than an uncirculated coin when you go to sell them. With that out of the way, in 1984 and 1988, the Lincoln Cent series both had double ears. 
The 84 is listed in the Cherry Pickers as the FS101, and in an AU58, you can expect to get about $46, where a Min State 63 Red Brown, about $70. On October 28th of 2020, at a Heritage auction, an Anex MS63 Red Brown brought $216. The next one we're going to look at is the 1988 Lincoln Cent. This is a doubled ear also, and it's listed in the Cherry Pickers Guide as the FS101. Now on this one here, I'm just going to jump. There's a pop of one for a Mint State 63 Red Brown, and also a population of one for an MS66 Red. I do believe there's more out there. However, on April 15th of 2020 at a Heritage Auction, the PCGS 66 Red sold for $3,120. Now, as recent as November 17th of 2020, there's been an offer to that person for $4,000 on that exact coin. This is a very scarce coin, in my opinion, and if you find one of those, these prices are absolutely obtainable, and I would suggest you get them graded in any condition of coin that you might find. This next coin, I've been searching for it ever since it's been discovered. It's the 1983 Lincoln Cent Double Die Reverse. It's a Fiva Stanton 801. Now the pricing says that in a fine 12, they're about $15, an AU50 about $45, and an AU58 about $60. Now, on December 13th of 2015, at a great collection, an AU55 sold for $302. This is a strong double die and it should be easy to pick out in your pocket change. The last one in the 1980s we're going to look at is the 1982. It's the Fiva Stanton 1801 and this is a double die reverse. Now, they don't have any pricing, so I cannot give you pricing on it. However, in a Mint State 62, there's a pop of one, and a 63, there's a pop of one. Both of those are on the PCGS website. I did find a few others over on NGC site. However, I just can't find any pricing on this at this time. Our next coin for this series is going to be the 1972 Lincoln Cent Double Die Augers. Now everybody knows about the number one that I'm showing right here. However, we're not going to concentrate on that. The one I look for, even though I do look for that one, plus all the others that are double die in 1972, the one that I really would like to find is a 72 FS 104. Now in an AG4, they have a value at $100. In an AU50, 575. In a 58. Now the price card says $650. However, on July 12th of 2015, that a great collection, a PCGS 58 brought $828.30. I think that would be low for today, and if one come up today, it would probably go over $1,000. Now I know many people look for the 72s. However, don't forget in 1971, the Lincoln Cent series also had a double die on it, and it's a Fiva Stanton FS101. In an extra fine 40, they're worth about $35. An AU50, 57. AU58, about 115. Now on July 14th of 2013, that a great collection, a PCGS AU58 brought $110. And just like the last two, let's not forget about the 1970 San Francisco double die offers. Now this is a pretty scarce variety. It's the Fiva Sant Danton FS101. In the extra fine 40, they have it valued at $650. AU50, $750. And AU58, $1,000. The record was March 19th of 2017 at a great collection auction. A PCGS AU58 brought $1,815 for a penny that you can find in your pocket. Now the last one really needs no introduction, but I'm going to include it because there has been some that have been found recently. This is the 1969 San Francisco. We use this as the example at the beginning. This is the Fiva Stanton FS101. If you find one in your pocket change, a VF35 is valued at $13,000, an AU50, $14,500. And an AU58, it's valued at $25,000. Now, on October 24th of 2009 at a Heritage Auction, a PCGS AU55 
sold for $54,625. Again, not too bad for finding a penny in your pocket change. Okay, don't leave yet. Because coming up, I'm going to be making a video shortly on transitional errors that you can find in your pocket change. Now, these are coins that you're definitely going to want to look for. They have very, very good value to them. And they'll add a lot of extra money in your wallet if you take them, if you happen to find them, search in your pocket change, search in rolls, however you may take and however you might search. Now, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up. We hope you subscribe. We've noticed that only about 50% of the people who watch this channel are subscribers. So we hope you take the time to subscribe. Hit the bell if you want to be notified when we do a live auction. We do three auctions every week. Uh, Monday at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And Friday at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. As well as on Wednesdays at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So... Take care, everybody. We hope you enjoyed the video, and we hope you come back for more. So, take care, have a wonderful week, and as I always like to say, happy hunting, folks.